Hi, this is Mark Birch and the following should give you a plan for a top grade response. And today I'm looking at how Shakespeare presents the supernatural in the play. In terms of context, we need to remember that James I was Shakespeare's patron, having made his company the King's Men. And James had an absolute fear of witchcraft. He believed that witches were behind attempts on his own life and ultimately wrote a treatise called Demonology on the Nature of Witchcraft. The significance of the supernatural is shown by Shakespeare structurally choosing to begin the play with the witches rather than with the eponymous hero. The malevolent nature of the supernatural is evident in Shakespeare's use of prophetic fallacy. The witches can only meet Macbeth in thunder, lightning or in rain, all things which have distinctly negative connotations. The contrast between most characters and the unnatural nature of the witches is made evident through Shakespeare's use of trochaic tetrameter rather than usual iambic pentameter, the use of full rhyme, choral speech where the witches talk together, and also their reference to familiars, you know, they talk to animals. And the sense of wrongness and uh, the unnatural is evident in the actual content of the speech. Fair is foul and foul is fair is a paradoxical chiasmus. There's a reversal there and there's a logical inconsistency which seems to point at the weirdness of the witches and the supernatural itself. In Macbeth's first physical appearance in the play, he echoes the witch's paradox by stating so foul and fair a day I have not seen, creating a link between Macbeth and the supernatural. Before Macbeth makes this appearance, uh, Act 1, Scene 3 returns to the witches once again, uh, with Shakespeare illustrating their torture of a sea captain on the basis of a minor slight. Just like the witches themselves, their appearance transgresses boundaries. Banquo says that they look not like the inhabitants of Earth, and also goes on to say you should be women and yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. The premonitions of Act 1, Scene 3 initiate Macbeth's thoughts of murder, and Banquo is forced to caution to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths. Uh, we can see the effect of it because Macbeth says, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair, namely murder? In Act 1, Scene 5, Lady Macbeth summons supernatural spirits of evil to remove her feminine qualities. In Act 2, Scene 1, the apparition of the dagger could be a supernatural creation to guide Macbeth in his horrific act. And also, Macbeth's soliloquy exploits the semantic field of the supernatural, for example, witchcraft celebrates. Banquo's ghost could be seen as a supernatural manifestation of Macbeth's guilt. Lady Macbeth explicitly links it to the dagger of Act 2, Scene 1 with This is the air drawn dagger, dismissing it as a figment of his imagination. But given that the audience is likely to see the ghost, it adds weight to an interpretation of the dagger as of supernatural origin. Given that the Hecate scene seems unlikely to be the work of Shakespeare, given its stylistic differences, um, its addition may suggest the desire of the audience for more of the sensationalist thrills of witnessing witchcraft. The horror of the supernatural is evident in the content of the witch's cauldron and the spell they're casting. And as well as this, the free premonitions that are given to Macbeth demonstrate the effect of the supernatural in terms of making him feel invincible and thereby carry out the horrific acts that follow. For the close analysis required to flesh out this framework, please refer to the videos I've made on the specific scenes. Okay, ta.